guys, today I'm going to show you what you should be carrying around in your music bag by showing you what I have in my music bag. And as a music teacher, I have to lug around practically a suitcase, but today I'm going to keep it down to the basics of what you'll need. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sarah Joy. I am a classically trained cellist. I'm a cello music teacher right now, and I love posting videos to YouTube because I get to help people and I get to give my music to them, and this is getting so cheesy and so sweet, but I'm sincere about everything. If you would like to keep up with my music videos and music tutorials every single week, I release both of those each week consistently, then you should definitely subscribe. I release between the hours of 12 and 2 p.m. Music videos are on Wednesday and music tutorials are on Friday. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. I do my best to get back with you and if this video helped you in any way, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share if you think it would help someone else. Okay, so first thing in my music bag, I have my rock stops. Always carry these with you. You don't know what kind of floor you will be using. It could be slippery tile, anything like that. If that is the case, the cello and pin will not stay. This is usually what students often use. I bring this along with me just in case anyone has forgotten their rock stop. This one is the one that I use. Um, it's good. It tends to make loud noises if the end pin like slips inside of there. It's very, very obnoxious, but uh, it, do it does the job well enough. Um, so all you have to do is just put this underneath um, the leg of the chair that you're sitting on and then adjust where your end pin goes. You can adjust it right here, the length. This is probably the best rock stop that I have found so far. The others just always end up sticking or slipping also. If you do use this kind and it does start slipping on you, um, this is kind of gross, but uh, a couple of my students, they um, lick their hand and then lick this, or not actually lick this, gross, but they lick their hand, put it on here, and it, it, it works. And if you want to be a little bit more classy, you can take rosin and rosin the bottom of it, and that also can sometimes help it to stick. The other thing I always have with me is a mute. I always use the tort style two-hole mute. It's simple, easy, cheap, not a big deal. And somewhere in here, yep, here it is, I have a second one. This is for in case any one of my friends or students forget theirs. So that's helpful to have two at all times. I actually think I borrowed this one from someone and they never asked for it back. Oops. And then here is my tuning fork. If you've never seen one before and you don't know how it works, basically you just like um, hit it on your knee like this and then you put it on wood or anything. You can actually put it against your teeth. I was, <laughs> my students were always doing that. Um, or you can hold it up to your ear. It gives you a perfect A. And that way you can tune your instrument. You can find an A if you're in choir. Uh, yeah, it's very handy. Um, here we have some tape, and this is not for me, this is for my students, of course, if we need to be putting tape on their instrument, have it right here. This is the kind that I use, it's just decorate and repair tape, Scotch brand, um, yeah, nothing really special, but it works. I prefer white, it's a little bit more professional. And to cut the tape, be sure to always have a pair of scissors with you. Um, I'm sure they have smaller sizes than this, but this is... All I had. In regards to guitar, I always keep a handful of picks around, mostly because I lose them like I lose bobby pins. Um, if any of you girls out there can relate, you will know the struggle that I speak of. And then for my electric cello, I carry around a pack of batteries. It runs on batteries. If I am in the middle of a show and my cello dies, then this, these are lifesavers because you do not want to be in that position. That sucks. Here is New Skin. It is a liquid bandage. I don't know how many other cellists use it. I use it all the time because I am constantly building up calluses, ripping them off from playing so much. So whenever you get a really, really painful uh, blister or callus or cut on your fingers whenever you're playing, then this stuff will patch it right up and it helps so much. Here, you will see um, I have some old strings, yep, some old strings from a past instrument where they were worn down. They still work though, so I don't really want to throw them away. Sometimes I'll give these to my students in case they need them, but most of the time I just carry them around in my bag. I always make sure to label what brand they are in case I happen to switch. So these, for example, are Helicor strings. I don't use these anymore, but they are good for backup. So in case during a concert one of your strings breaks, 
then all you have to do, dig in your bag, pull out one of these, and I always mark them. Helicore, this is the C string, this is the G, and A, D, blah, blah, blah. So yes, always good to have a bunch of spares handy. While we're on that subject, these are the spares of the strings that I actually use. Um, the cello C, this is Belcanto. Um, I also use Belcanto for the G, and for the D and A, I use Larson. And also carry around spare strings for the guitar. These are Martin acoustic guitar strings. Probably not the best quality, but I'm not really a guitar player. Don't tell anyone. Here I have my Wolf Eliminator. And basically you just stick it on the string that you are having the wolf on. I explained what a wolf is in my last video. You can go check that out, hint, hint. Usually you'll know if you have a wolf or not by the first time you try out the cello. But in case any of my students are having trouble with one, then we just pop this on and it takes care of the problem for the most part. For all of you who do outdoor wedding gigs, these are the best things ever. Yes, no, if you are reading music outside and the wind kicks up, especially where I live, West Texas, oh yes, okay. These will save the entire performance. So always carry a couple of them around and then you can just clip, clip the sides of the music to the stand and you're good to go. And also have a pencil, pencils are handy, and you'll get yelled at if you don't bring one to orchestra rehearsal. Then of course, bring your rosin. I don't actually use this kind anymore, but I always carry this one around with me because uh, I don't want my good stuff getting borrowed, like I borrowed that person's mute. These are so handy if you're weak and tiny, such as myself. Um, if you can't turn the pegs of your cello, all you have to do is put a cloth on them so that you don't scratch the wood, and then just clamp this around the pegs, and you can adjust them much easier. This also works for your fine tuners. Then, with this same cloth, this is a very pretty soft cloth that I take around with me everywhere. Um, and this is to clean off the cello of any rosin, sweat, grossness. I try not to get my instrument gross in the first place, but you always have to wipe off the rosin. Also, I am in the habit of carrying around gum because sometimes I'll get stressed out and tense <laughs> whenever I'm playing. and. A lot of the tension ends up kind of happening in my jaw area and then it extends like through my neck and it can even affect my shoulders. So if you struggle with tension, gum is a really good thing to take with you, especially if the tension isn't in the jaw area. If you chew it, it just kind of, it, it helps. But I have to give you a disclaimer, do not chew gum during orchestra rehearsals or during any sort of performance. It is so tacky, don't do it, the conductor will not be happy with you. So do not chew gum in professional settings. I always carry around a practice journal just to keep track of your progress, you know, have the general outline of what you want to practice that day. It just, you know, it's always good for me to have something visual. So my pretty little flower notebook um, keeps track of everything. We have not much else. Last items are some music books. The first one is this mastering the guitar, uh, I am really just now starting to get serious about learning the guitar. I've always just done stuff by ear before and I actually need to be professional about it and learn it so that I can, you know, be cool. Yeah. And then for cello, I always, 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 always have two books in particular. You have your Bach, unaccompanied cello suites, all six of them, and then... And then you have your Hopper Etudes. Both of these have lost their covers because I use them so much and they just kind of fell off. They help so much. They're foundational for cello repertoire and I take them with me wherever I go. So even if I don't have my cello with me, I can sit down and study them if I have some downtime. And that is basically all I have. Yep, I can't think of anything else. I do have a piano book, a jazz piano book that I use to practice, which I do not have with me right now. But it's always good to have that around. And if you can think of anything that I missed, please comment below in the comment section. Again, thank you so much for watching. I always enjoy making these videos for you guys. And yeah, so stay tuned for more videos and I hope that this one helped.